I'm going to show you how to set up a read-only domain controller, otherwise known as an RODC. A read-only domain controller hosts a read-only copy of your Active Directory database, except for any account passwords. The main reason for using an RODC instead of a standard writable domain controller is when you can't guarantee physical security of the domain controller, such as if someone could pick it up and walk away with it. Other than that, in most other situations, I would recommend a standard writable domain controller, but if for whatever reason you do need to use an RODC, this is how you set it up. So far, I've installed Windows Server, I've given it a host name, I've given it a static IP and DNS, and that is it. So to start, you can go to Manage, Add Roles and Features, then go to Next, select Role-based or Feature-based installation, select the server, and then select Active Directory Domain Services, and then DNS Server, and then press Next, and then Next again, and then just keep pressing Next through these wizards until you get to Install, and then press Install. Now that the installation is finished, we can press Close, come up to the Notifications, and press Promote this server to a domain controller. Now within the domain controller wizard, we need to specify what we're doing. And in this case, we are adding a domain controller to an existing domain. We can type our domain in, which we want to join the domain controller to, and then press select, and then specify the credentials for the domain. And then select the domain and press OK, and then press next. In the domain controller options, this is where we can specify that we want it to be a read-only domain controller. So we just tick that box. We can then select the site and then set our DSRM password. Once we've made sure the read-only domain controller is ticked, we can press next. And here is where we configure some basic options. So by default, the read-only domain controller does not cache any credentials locally unless they are in this allowed RODC password re replication group, which by default is blank, so no passwords will be stored. It's also set up to force deny any password replication for any of these groups, such as administrators, server operators, backup operators, account operators, and denied RODC password replication group. So if anyone is in any of these groups, and they are also placed in the or allowed RODC password replication group, it, the deny will take precedence and then not allow the password to be cached. So I'm happy with these default settings. So I'm gonna press next. Here we can specify where we want to replicate from. I currently only have one domain controller. So I'm just gonna leave it as any, but you can specify one if you want and then press next. I'm gonna leave the database log files and sysfile folder in their default location and then press next. This is an overview of what we've configured. If you want, you can press view script if you want to save the script and then automate it in the future. But I'm just gonna close that and then press next. This is now gonna check the prerequisites, make sure everything is, is okay. That's come back saying all checks pass successfully. And I'm just gonna press install to begin the process. Now the server's booted back up after its automatic restart. I'm just going to log in to the domain. Now it's been promoted. Now the first thing I do with any domain controller after it's been promoted to a domain controller is go in and just check the DNS settings and make sure that it's pointing to another domain controller first and then pointing to itself second. Now I've set the DNS, I'm going to go to Tools and then Active Directory Users and Computers. Within Active Directory, I'm just going to expand my domain and then go to Domain Controllers. 
And then here we can see we've got my primary DC01, which is a global catalog, and the RODC01, which is a global catalog and read only. So here, if I bring up both domain controllers, so we've got the primary domain controller on the left and the read only domain controller on the right, we can see that these look slightly different. And the only thing that's different is this password replication policy on any read only domain controllers. And here it tells us what the password policy is. So by default, it denies the password caching of all user accounts unless they're added into this allowed RODC password policy, which by default is blank. And it force denies anything in the account operators, administrators, backup operators, denied RODC password replication group and server operators. So if anyone is in the allowed and one of these deny groups, the deny will take precedence. So what you might notice is if we go to users or any group, we can actually still create um, new users and groups and make modifications, even though this is a read-only domain controller. That's because when you connect using Active Directory users computers, it connects to any writable domain controller. So to change that, you can right click your domain and then press change domain controller. And we can see that we have both in here, but by default, it's set to select from any writable domain controller. So to just show this actually works, if I manually change this to an RODC, it comes up saying you've selected a domain controller that is read only. You will not be able to perform any write operations. So I can press OK. And now if I try to make any changes, it doesn't let me, there isn't even a new option. And if I go to any groups and try to make changes to the members, I, it's all blanked out and I can't make any changes at all. So that's shown that the read only to make controller is working and read only. And if we need to make changes, we need to change the domain, change the domain controller and select any writable or manually select one that is not an RODC. So let's do any writable. And then if I go back, it now lets me make amendments to Active Directory. And that's how you set up a read-only domain controller in your Active Directory network.